Well, hello, YouTube. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And today, I wanted to show you the uh, gun after I got it cleared. I've lost a, a few of these videos over a period of time that it, uh, when I started this job. And um, I'm sure I have those files, but I wanted to try to do some narrations here, and um, basically I'm just uh, going over it and making sure it's not too tacky, and it feels a little tacky, so we uh, went ahead and went with it, um, <clears throat> simply because when it's tacky, it still moves around. Um, you got to be more careful with it, but the uh, clear coat will move around a little more freely. And um, you don't have to work so hard doing it. Um, and it makes the runs, if you got any, and I believe I did have one run right there where I'm looking at now. And, uh, you know, a little bit of work with some soft. Um, uh, clear coat makes it really uh, flatten out. You want to make sure that your clear coat is nice and flat and even, no little clear uh, specks. If you see a clear speck, then that means that there's a hole right there because when you were sanding it, you're going across it and you're missing the spot that's lower than where you're sanding. So anytime you see a little silver or a little shiny spot, then that means you need to work a little bit more on it until that's just disappeared. You don't want to take it any further than just disappearing. Uh, you can get it to where you can just barely see it and then when you come over with the uh, rubbing compound, then you'll see a big difference because the rubbing compound also takes and sands it to a certain degree. It's just got a really finer grit. Um, and that polish I use was stuff that I used for at an auto body shop and we used that after we painted a car. We'd go over the car, we'd wet sand the car, and um, see, I'm getting all sidetracked here. And that's, I'm doing the exact same thing you would do on an automotive, uh, or automobile. So, you just basically transfer the trade from one to the other and it's the same identical process whether it be metal, wood, plastic, it don't matter. It's the same process. So, you know, I just kind of rubbed that steel wool on there and until it was uh, flat all the way across it. Alright, so now that the clear coat is dry, we can go ahead and get started on wet sand. Uh, got my bucket of water there and my sandpaper and that thing's really glossy right there. So now we're going to do the same identical thing 
but this time we're going to use 600 sandpaper and just dip it in the water and go off on some kind of a wild goose chase and then be gone for a while what the hell man where'd you go oh I had to go strip <laughs> well they going anyway I get on these uh, concentration issues I ended up not using this squeegee uh, I'm, squeegee's okay on a car, but when you're when you're working on a uh, gun, squeegee really ain't going to help you too much. In fact, it scratches it a little bit, so it's not not a good idea to use a squeegee on, on wood. Um, but anyway, you just take that and wet that paper, and you uh, just swirl it back and forth, swirl it a little bit in places. You know, some kind of going back and forth, and I think I got a noise in my uh, mic. Uh, been dealing with some mics and camera issues, and uh, I'm trying out my new uh, Phantom Power. Uh, recording studio mic uh, that I had when I used to have my recording studio yes guys I had a camouflage studios too it was camouflage also that was the theme for that for that little uh, episode anyway uh, been trying it out and I noticed and you guys can tell me what you think um, it sounds like there's a lot of fans going on in the background, so my mic is in the middle of my desk, and my computer's on the right side of my desk, and the fans are like parallel to them. So I'm thinking the echo from all the fans is really pushing into this mic, and I think you guys can hear it. Um, I hear it when I go to play it back in Media Player, but anyway, let's get back to the task at hand. I'm, I'm simply looking over it and checking to make sure there's no shiny spots. Because uh, remember, I just cleared it, and when you clear coat, you end up with fish eye. Uh, and uh, those has got to be sanded out. Because, first of all, my shop is not a dust-free environment. It, you know, if you want to do a good paint job and you don't want nothing in it, you've got to have a real nice down draft and uh, have a room that has been washed down with water and is still damp. Uh, <coughs> is the... Uh, painting process is a pain in the ass <laughs> when you're doing it for for a living but when you're doing it for yourself you can do it exactly the way I'm doing it now I have changed I'm moving up to 1200 sandpaper <clears throat> and then we're going to go over that one more time yet again
So now we've got the last bit of it done and now it's time to change the scene. We're going to try to find a place to set it so we don't break it. Move all of our stuff out of the way and put a new towel down because that was a little damp. So we just laid us another rag on top of it. That's the old lady's towel right there. Thought I'd uh, use hers, she won't notice it. The one laying on the table is hers. <laughs> uh, speaking of her, you see that cross behind me on the uh, cabinet door? She made that for me from the skull saw. And I got a squeaky chair. I guess I got to get ready for the day. Must have been cold. <laughs> I had two shirts on. <laughs> Boy, that's pitiful when you laugh at yourself. I done went and changed my clothes, apparently. This must have been the next day. Anyway, I'm back there trying to find a place to put it, I'm sure. You know, that's something in my shop. Everything in my shop, I swear to God, has legs. You can't see them, but they got them. Trust me. Every time I lay a tool down, two seconds later, it's gone. I laid a bearing on that bench right there, one of them uh, brass bushings for my roller for the trailer I'm building, and I set it down, and we have still yet to find it, and that was yesterday. I think they have long legs, and they got away quick. But uh, what we've got going on now is the rubbing compound. Now, I'm going to show you before. See how dull it looks? I did notice a shiny spot there. I think I went back over that after I finished it. And I didn't like it, so I went over it again. That part I didn't show you. <coughs> But basically what I'm doing is taking that rubbing compound and just rubbing it in. Nice and firm, but not to where you're heating the uh, polyurethane up. Uh, you want to put a little warmth on it and it will make it flow nice. But, you know, just a touch. You don't want to get crazy. And then you take a nice dry towel over top of that thing. Look at that shine. Ain't that pretty? I've always liked that style of stock. I kind of like the um, the uh, 700 Remington uh, with the black tip. I think that's just that's an awesome look. And I'm probably going to end up making a gun with a, a black tip on it. Um, I'd just like to get a true piece of ebony and make a real nice stock. Uh, I'm saving that project for my another my next dream uh, gun, and that would be the uh, Benjamin Marauder uh, in the 25 caliber. But uh, basically, we just uh, kept on polishing on this thing until it was done. And um, we'll just uh, stop here because it looks like I've taken a break too.
All right, so now that we've got it done and back together, just kind of wanted to go over a uh, little short video here at the end to show you the butt plate. Uh, the, pl the piece that I put in between the butt plate is just butt plate. It's just a piece of white plastic. Same on the grip. And that there is just a sandpaper grip that goes on the steps to keep you from slipping. And then we've got the center point scope. And then we've got the forearm grip. I kind of wanted a different design, but that tip really looks awesome. Uh, then my suppressor that I turned on the uh, Atlas lathe when I had the Atlas lathe. And I took the camera off of it because it was just too damn big. So, um, it's back to normal. And I took the camera off and it's just the gun and the scope now. Uh, <clears throat> I thought I was thought about doing uh, video shots of all my, all my kills, but I don't shoot like I used to. Uh, I think I must be growing out of it. And I've had that strap on just about every gun I've ever owned, and I wouldn't get rid of that strap for any man's money. But. Uh, <clears throat> That's the uh, gun that's on the beginning and end of every one of my videos. It's one of the highlights of my channel, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys have a good one. Later.